You know, there's nothing like cracking that, that cellophane and pulling that record out. It just smells great. Welcome to Buzz Mayhem Hour. Non-stop hardcore energy. I love the show, guys. You're awesome. Yeah. Unlike any other. With your host, John the Bud, a.k.a. The Bodfather. Man, this stuff rocks. What's up, everybody? We're Seven Stones, and you're listening to Bod's Mayhem Hour. The views and opinions of the guest do not necessarily reflect the views and opinions of Bod's Mayhem Radio Network, its staff, affiliates, or sponsors. Parental discretion is advised. Welcome to Bod's Mayhem Radio Network. Hey, everybody. Welcome to Bod's Mayhem Hour. I am your host, John the Bod, a.k.a. the Bod Father. And as always, I bring you guys and gals awesome interviews. Today, it's an honor and a huge privilege to welcome Seven Stones to the show. And I'm going to have the guys introduce himself, then we'll get into a good intro. So, guys, please introduce yourself. I'm Drew Elliott. Abraham Montalvo. Rich Aycock. Seven Stones have released their new single entitled Break off the heels of their full-length album entitled A Hope for Tomorrow. And we're going to talk to these guys about all this good stuff. So how you guys doing so far, man? Pretty good. good. Wonderful. Yeah. Starting what to get a little day. cold, but yeah, yeah, other than that, doing pretty well. Yeah, I hate this time of year. Everybody's like, I'd love to fall. I'd love to just shut up. Shut up. <laughs> I hate it. I hate it. Cold in the morning. Then the morning. Don't like it. Yeah, it's then it's about 70 degrees by mid-afternoon. Yeah. Yeah, it's yeah. it sucks, but it is what it is. I guess it's better than being 106 all damn day. Mm-mm. I'll take 106 every day, every day. Oh yeah, for sure. <laughs> <laughs> so <don't> sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> How excited are you guys to finally have a full length album under your guys' belt so far? Right? In in the uh, Seven Stones library, I should say. How does it feel to have it out, guys? It feels good. Um, we actually, we had a seven song EP with most of those songs on it and it just didn't turn out the way we wanted to, so, but we did a lot of learning off of that. And then, uh, I guess how many years was it? Like two it's years been, after? Yeah, it was, uh, what, two years. Yeah. Okay. So two years after that, we, we re-recorded, added, wrote some new stuff. So, uh, it was about a year. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. A lot of wasted money. But uh, <laughs> you live and learn. Good times. Yeah. But uh, we were really proud to still have that out, and uh, we would like to redo some things on some elder stuff. But I doubt this going to go. Why are you looking at me that way, Richard? <laughs> I, I, I think uh, at the experience of us recording an album was some very, uh, you know, gathering for us as like the core members of the band because when we. Uh, move forward uh in a new direction we got our new drummer jake Klein's added to the mix uh who's not here by the way yeah it just it it changed the dynamic of the band in a in a very positive light manner and uh the album experience was a lot of fun uh now we've learned you know a lot from our earlier music path of decision making and things of that nature and uh and playing style playing style so like where we're at now versus where we were then if uh you know, that album being fun as it was, it was an experience being in the studio and doing what we're doing now with just putting out singles and really focusing the craft uh, with all of us together. I think it's uh, it's something special is going to come out. Something special, I feel like we're going to start working on something bigger, something even better than the first. So, oh, yeah. 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 It's uh, There's a lot of stuff coming down the pipeline uh pertaining to what Abe was talking about with yeah. singles and uh possibly maybe hashing a lot of those singles together uh for another new record for a new record maybe a new mm-hmm. like release everything compiled together yeah. things that were actually taken off and taken yeah. care of within the next couple of weeks and uh our new producer yeah. he's amazing man like he's yeah, literally concept. changed the dynamic of our Sorry. band just working with him and he understands the vision of Seven Stones, and he he's been wanting to work with us since last year. And we uh, we didn't consider it until we considered it, and uh, it, it was when we recorded Break, and just it changed the entire sound. It was a night and day from the album to this. So, so I got you. <laughs> yeah. 
So I, I guess going back and, and doing a, I guess a so-called remaster of some of these songs. I mean, it, it, oh, to you guys, new to us, man, it had to be like gut wrenching to say, let's get this shit out and be done with it. Cause I mean, you, you want to move forward, you want to move on, but you know, looking back on those songs, how, what about the growth from working on those songs till now up till break and plus, you know, new stuff has that shown the growth of this band? Dear God, by, yeah, by far. Yeah. Like I would say that is probably, <laughs> that's probably like if you could, if you could open up seven mm-hmm. stones and examine each, every single aspect, the main, the main meat and potatoes is just <laughs> how much we have grown and how our sound and how our whole attitude and our style has, has just, changed and adapted mm. within itself from just releasing that that full album to where we're at now it's mm-hmm. it, like abe said it's completely night and day yeah. and it's just it's just it's just a mold coming together it's a testament of four four different people coming together and creating brotherhood uh, uh, different ideals turning into one and creating this thing that we call music and understanding that we have differences but we also have uh, similarities and we're taking all this and we're just creating and we're doing something that we didn't do before i'm trying to think about the say i mean <laughs> yeah that yeah, i mean we did with like you know the pandemic we also grew through that too like that kind of you know pushed us also further forward i'm thinking and getting a little bit more especially adding jacob uh his drumming style changed a lot too and it and uh when I first started out, I didn't do a lot of harsh vocals. Like I was kind of scared to, or I just, I was like, I don't know if I can write shit like that. Or sorry, I don't know if I can cuss on here, but uh, <laughs> hopefully I'm okay. Cause it, there'll probably be a few more in the next a little bit. Right. Right. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yeah, like I just, I got more comfortable with it and we're all uh, metal heads. So like having, you know, that little bit of Southern rock sounding that we had with the hope for tomorrow and then, now changing into a you know a little bit heavier stuff, which we're not going to go away from our roots by any means. I don't think anyway. Mm-hmm. We're just we're playing it by ear and having fun with what we're doing, and we play what we feel. Yeah, and uh, it's a hell of a difference. Like uh, I will always love you know that first album, I Hope Tomorrow, and uh, it'll hold a special place. But also, yeah. we do want to move forward and still yeah love those songs. It, it, it's crazy because you know a lot of uh, new people are coming onto our music and discovering who we are and how like we've had that out for a few years now, and it's just like man, post pandemic, like it gave us so much room to grow, so much room to write and to really own in on our craft. And break is the product of that, as was Save Today and Take Me Home, but more so break being the latest. To come out of that and just really showcase that we're on to something different that we weren't on to before. That's what I look forward to. <laughs> I've had many conversations, you know, throughout this pandemic of, of bands saying, "Hey, we've we've got enough material for like two to three albums," and I'm going, "Fuck, seriously? <laughs> it's going to be insane to see like, I don't know, a year or two down the road when those albums." come out if for wishing to see in their minds it's like i, I want to see it i, I want to see those albums i want to hear them because it's going to be a two totally different opposites i think I, I think hopefully soon we'll get back to normal a little you know normalcy soon but you're going to see the difference between when the pandemic albums versus getting back you know what i'm saying yeah so, I'm really, it, it has to be a roller coaster just of just of emotion of when you're writing, you know, like, yeah. you know, disappointed, you know, sad, depressed, pissed the hell off, you know, happy, you know, somewhat finding yourself again. And then like just going back and forth. Cause I know a lot of people are down through a lot of it. And then a lot of people got pissed off because of a lot of it too. And yeah, I can imagine ours doing the same thing, but we don't have two or three albums like in the, the kitty for that. So my apologies for everybody else. <laughs> Cause I, I know me and you worked, like mainly through most of the pandemic yeah uh because i do construction and then i did construction yeah, did construction. i did construction and now I'm, i help uh run uh inventory at a uh warehouse I and jack was the master mechanic so he never stopped here sorry go ahead <laughs> I, I, was saying, I, I work through it too I, I work at tech support i work one week in the office and i work one week at the house so yeah, I, I've worked with, I worked through it too. And plus, I was in the hospital for two weeks, and I'm thank God I didn't get COVID while I was in there here recently. Yeah, that's I worked there 
myself. I was in the hospital all throughout the. <laughs> See, entire... I I knew that like you had a little like I had a little time break. off. Yeah. yeah, yeah. They gave us they pulled us out for two weeks and they put us back, and it was just like instantly work was back to normal. It was weird. Yeah, uh, we were like, we don't know if we're gonna have work or not. And I'm glad that you uh, made it out of the hospital without getting COVID, yeah. sir. Yeah, I appreciate that. <laughs> <laughs> uh, pretty scary. Uh, so I can imagine. So, fun. As a vocalist, man, did you find yourself, if that makes sense, during this whole process, did you find your zone and pushed out of that company uh, to for your vocals? I, I guess, um, I guess it's always been there. It's just I, I'm writing has always been kind of weird with some of it, and uh, I guess a little bit. Of, yeah, I guess you can hear a little bit of the frustration saved today, but uh, break definitely it definitely i guess that emotion of how pissed off i was whenever we kind of started jamming it and the lyrics just kind of came out i guess i guess i found my the heavier side a little bit for sure what's impressed each of you the most about making the debut album if anything what sticks out the most for each of you guys on it that was uh what a time uh we recorded that in two days for, for me, what I remember, <laughs> yeah, yeah, we recorded that yeah. two days. Uh, yeah, you know, we, I mean, we already had the bulk of the bulk of the music just because we had done the EP. But what stuck out to me was uh, just being in the studio and us being able to jam it out together and just build that brotherhood in within the studio. Being in one room, locked in there, and just getting through the tracks. And then just listening back to like what we were creating. That that stuck out to me about uh, it bonded us in those moments. I wanted to strangle most of everybody when I was doing fucking vocals. We are like, dude, why, why is it like, why are you not hitting these? Like, why are you not doing that? And I was like, I have to sing goddamn 12 fucking songs. That's my fucking problem. Like, I've got eight fucking hours. Oh, God. Yeah. Fun time. Two whole freaking day. Oh, my God. That had been hell. Yeah. Dude, we did all click tracks. One yeah. day, then went back and recorded each of them, like with yeah. all the instruments back and forth. And then the next day was vocals and then like the acoustics, Dude, which was only like two songs. The worst part is I was shit. suffering, uh, I think, pneumonia or some shit that weekend. It was my birthday weekend and we had to be in there to record. Yeah. That shit sucked. Oh, my God. Oh my God. <laughs> I forgot I pushed a lot of that, but it was two days in my like yeah. in my mind. It was, like, it out was of it. The, the 8th and the 9th. Ever. I then I get yelled at for drinking in the studio. I'm like, well, it's not helping your vocals. Yeah. Like, well, neither is you nagging me right now. Somebody it wasn't so the fact that you were drinking; it's how much you were drinking. Yeah. He's like, "Oh, I'm just gonna drink three beers," and then a fucking eighteen pack later, he's just like, "I wasn't driving." Don't, don't, don't tell me I can't drink. <laughs> well, let me uh, give me a fucking tuber. I'll get something out of it for you. That's hilarious. Hundred <laughs> pack, damn it. That's hilarious. <laughs> Man alive. I drink when we record now. <laughs> we take a very professional approach to recording now versus like our first album. That was still professional. Yeah, I mean, was it, 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 for, what I it was, was, for what it was, it was fun. But like you hear the first album, it, it feels very uh feels very loose. We don't sound tight as a band. Uh, you like when you hear it now, it's a difference. You guys should have done like a uh a, a B roll with him, like Outtake oh, in the studio. Hey, you're a damn bear. You leave me alone. <laughs> in between songs, I would make my like my own radio DJ uh, like sounds just to irritate everybody. I'm not going to repeat what I said, but uh, I used to have a lot of fun when I was drunk in the, the sound booth doing that. Good times. <laughs> uh, good, times. good times in the studio. <laughs> <laughs> any tracks setting out more to you guys than any right now on that debut album? I know it must change every time you guys listen to it. I know the, that's your babies. I know you guys put it on an EP to the full length, but I think tracks that stick out for each of you. I'm pretty sure at least I it's usually is the same the same one for all three of us. Mm -hmm. It might vary from there. Yeah. But into the dark yeah. will forever be like yeah. That song for that we all kind of like clicked on like whenever it was written, we were just like, oh fuck. Yeah. Like yeah. this is this is something like really cool. Oh, I don't want to get sappy. Don't don't take me down that road. I don't, don't want to get that. sappy. Yeah, yeah. I don't. But no, the I'm other song bad. off of the debut that like I know that not everybody still enjoys for some fucking reason that I love is Bottom of the Bottle. Again, about booze. I don't want to fucking lie. Oh, wow. But um <laughs> Yeah, I mean they all hold a special place in my heart. Yeah. Like the whole all of them do, but into the dark and I think bottom of the bottle. 
Well, to touch back on uh, to touch back on the previous question about the 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 growth and everything, and then to hear is exactly what you just said was the um, uh, the songs being your babies because a lot of those songs were songs that you had written in your college days. Mm-hmm. Yeah, a lot, a lot of them were songs that you had written previously before Seven Stones. Yeah, yeah. And I also then, didn't think I was going to sing in a fucking band because yeah. it was an outlet, and I was like, I'm going to sell these motherfuckers at some point. And then, no, you assholes like what I wrote, so we're here. Yeah, <laughs> yeah we're here. I, I like hearing stories of where these songs came from. I mean, I don't want like no like creation or anything. I just like to know the because. It came from a journal or, or it came from, I wrote this from high school, like 15, 20 years. I'm going, damn, crazy. Yeah. Yeah. It's, a, it's a lot of heartbreak, man, and a lot of alcohol consumption for the most of those. Somebody asked me that too. And it was like, there seems to be a theme on that first album. So, yeah, there was, <laughs> there, there was a theme. Could have been your all's car. <laughs> <laughs> we do have a lot of good alcohol sales on our shows. So. <laughs> <laughs> Was there a track that you guys were working on that totally ended up sounding different than it was intended to that then was brought to the table? The original End of the Dark definitely fucking yeah. was. Yeah. Yeah. We like it was supposed to be like all acoustic. And then uh our first producer, uh Ethan Martin, was like, like, dude, why don't we all kick in with the band? We were like, yeah. and I was like totally against it. I was like, dude, no, because that song means a lot. And, and I was like, dude, I don't know about that. And he was like, dude, no, we can all come in at once and as soon as we did it, like we practiced it, and I was like, "Holy shit!" All right, I'm, I'm fucking stupid for not realizing that this sounds really cool. See, that, I, I'm trying to think yeah. if uh... originally, like having the 12 string playing and then, yeah. you know the beautiful yeah. melody, and then like it, it was just acoustic. And when we heard the idea, and he changed it up, and it's like another full band comes in, and it was just like a holy shit moment for all of us. Like this changes the dynamic of the song. It was an aha moment. Mm-hmm. I don't. Th- was anything else changed uh, drastically? I don't think that. I could... All my life. Oh yeah, all my life. All my life. Yeah, from yeah. the EP to the album. Because yeah. it's slow. Well, well, yeah, slow. but it was the. It was also certain uh, certain uh, post prod oh, things yeah. that were added. <laughs> post prod things that were added. That, there, there was an argument over. I'm sorry, Ethan, if you hear this at some point. I'm so fucking sorry. Well, I mean, it was early it. in our career, you know. Like we oh, did, no, no. we did an EP, yeah. and it was just it wasn't what we what we sought out to to create. It was our first experience, and it was a learning well, lesson. We but took it, a chance, and so did yeah. he because he had never recorded a rock band either. Yeah. So, so he kind of got we we, we kind of learned it. It was all trial by fire for both. Yeah. Yeah. Still love you. We all grew together, and we learned it together. It was the most important thing coming from that. But it's cool, though, when you go back and look at this and say, hey, let's take a look at this song and, and look where it came from to where it ended up at. Yeah. You know, that's that's the sure. part to see the growth of this band. I think that, to me, sticks out more than anything for any band. Cool. Right. Yeah. Facts. I think they did. Can't say stagnant, for sure. I mean, unless we just rolled off, like, six number one hits or some shit off of Hope for Tomorrow and we had no fucking clue. I mean, uh, <laughs> <laughs> you got to keep moving forward. You got to do something. You guys got the new single break. Single break. Is this going to be a one-off song, or is this going to be on the road or a full week down the road? What are you guys working on for this one? I th- think. I, I mean, I feel like break is the beginning product of what's next to come. As far as like, if we do a new album, uh, we do or do a, a little minor EP. Yeah, I, I feel yeah. Like break is the pro- the beginning product of that, and you know. We're about to go back in the studio and record a new single. Yeah. And this next single kind of carries a little bit of that touch of break, but it's its own song. I do think in the future we're going to change up a little bit. I want to add an accordion and um, <laughs> a flautist. Uh, <laughs> we're gonna go, I'm going to go Jethro Toll with it meets Weird Al Yankovic at the same time. And, uh, I'm looking forward to that. Oh, no. but, uh, on a real note, uh, we are recording. Is it this? Yeah, it's this yeah, weekend. It's this weekend. We're recording a, a new single this weekend as yeah. well. It does not have the accordion or the flute in it. Sorry. Or didgeridoos. No, the didgeridoos. Oh, no. No didgeridoos. No. Come on. Come on. Need an army fucking didgeridoos. <laughs> <laughs> when you said like Jethro Toy, I just instantly went back to when I was a kid and watched Metallica get beat out by Jethro Toy on the MTV Music Award. But no. No Jethro uh, Toy. <laughs> Don't, you can't talk about Metallica around Rich. It's a band. 
Oh, no. they're banned. No, no, in a bad way. No, he's like, I love Jethro Tull. No, <laughs> no offense, Jethro Tull. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> So how many songs, I know you're going back into the studio to record right this weekend, but for a new single, do you, how many songs do you guys have written right now? Are you guys still in the process of writing? And has the songwriting become more easier for you guys now? Uh, yes and no at times, because we've written songs in like, I guess, two or three different ways. Me and Abe have worked on songs, collaborated with on lyrics, and we've written you know, Solace was one of those songs off of uh, I Hope for Tomorrow. And then there's a lot of songs that I sit down with my guitar, kind of like how I did in college, and then I write it out and play. And then I bring it to the table, and they're either like, yeah, that's awesome, or please get the fuck out of here. And the third option is uh, how Break was written. Abraham had a, a, a badass riff that we'd listened to, and he'd shown it to me like three times, and I was like, yeah, man, I dig it. And it wasn't until Rich and Jacob started playing, and it kicked in, and then I just like... <laughs> And lyrics came out of me in the middle of a lot of the new stuff has been like pre pro yeah. at home on uh on MacBook and Logic and learning how to create demos at home just from ideas, just writing down riffs. I'm like, hey guys, what do you guys think of this? You know, and we go from there. I, th- I think that's one of the most easiest ways to write when you have an idea and you just record it mm-hmm. and you just send it and see what everybody thinks and you bring it to practice, kind of like what I do with break and everybody just grooved with it and. Here it is. <laughs> it was just, okay, this is cool. We can do this. This is a different form of writing, but it's still us collectively doing it together. I want to go back and touch on this, if you guys don't mind, for a moment. With a pandemic, do you think it's helped, like, local bands, underground bands, especially like a new band like you guys? Do you think it's helped you all, or do you think it's like an even playing field now for everybody? Well, I know it hurt us at first for damn sure, because we had a nice, like we were finally getting like little runs at a, at a state, you know, going around to more places. Cause I mean, we play in Tennessee, Georgia and Alabama a good bit, you know, we were trying to bitch her out, you know, hit Mississippi and Florida and North Carolina and, and so on. And, uh, you know, we were finally getting ready to do that. And then it just kind of shot us in the foot. But at the same time, I think it did kind of reset us. To, to gear up for like because honestly if it, if it wouldn't have happened i don't know if save the day would have came out or if break would have uh, been there no take me home was beforehand yeah because the trees are drunk but we still we but we've already still released that. it this year you know that was the yeah. same time that we recorded with it save the day break was produced mixed and mastered at sound anchor studios by dalton skinner i was working with this guy on this one ah he's awesome oh, yeah, he's, he's the best great. man he's great i'm, I'm man. gonna See him on Saturday. I'm like, kiss him on the mouth. He's yeah. fucking awesome. He's, I uh, love Dalton. He's, he's the, him and Ike Thurston at Little Chimney Studios are the dynamic duo of recording. So, drum engineer, they're just amazing. They're Work, working with those guys, did they get something out of you all that maybe somebody else might not have gotten, possibly? I think they understood us more than anything. Mm-hmm. I think they, they saw our vision and they could capture it. And, you know, they'll throw in there and it's like, you know, we'll add like school here or, or, you know, do something like really cool at the beginning. Because he works with, you know, a few of our friends the be- they both do with to this day and fault lines that are clockwise. Also. Oh, and clockwise. Mm-hmm. Sorry, guys. But uh, they all do their stuff and all of it sounds so fucking good. And I know that they actually they do help, you know, with, you know, certain feels or something on drums. If they if he thinks that, you know, it could fit really well and. He's really good if you're like, hey, man, do you want my help? And if you tell him no, he'll be like, okay, I get it. <laughs> Which we're not really in the process of saying no. We're always down to change. We're always down to listen and see if it goes well. Because I, I think I would be the one that freaks the hell out right. in the studio. They're like, man, you need to do something different. I was like, I don't know if I can. I don't know if I can. Please don't fucking do this to me right now. An example <laughs> of it was, uh, was on break. Uh, the entire second verse was very similar to the first uh, in the original oh, yeah. recording. Mm-hmm. And uh, when Jacob uh, went into do drums, uh, he told us, hey, man, Ike has a different idea for the entire second verse. Just listen to it. And he started <laughs> practicing it. And we got the we track. Just sat there, we just jammed it out. Like, okay, this sounds badass. No, I better. think the funniest thing is that we all listen to the track and we're like, what the fuck is that? Like, <laughs> it's wow, a, we've never heard. Like, why is it? It, it, it had oh, like yeah. such an upbeat change. It sounded on near kill switch style. And then all of a sudden, then the breakdown with the ride. And it was just like, okay, this song just changed for the yeah, best. Completely. And then 
finalizing it in the studio was just amazing. Yeah. So what has Jacob added to this band that might have been missing possibly? Not to knock the other guy or anything like that, but what has adding him sparked for this band? Uh, I think it just – his free, like, like he's on the same page as us. Like the chemistry was instant as soon as because we had him, we had tryouts and he showed up within the first two notes of like he he knew he held in. Mm-hmm. And uh as soon as he hit, I was like, oh my God, I don't know if I can hear anything else anymore. Like he was like spot on. And he'll take criticism, you know, he'll listen to what we've got to say. And he also will, he's like, well, you know, he points out certain things. He's like, why don't you do this? It's like, why don't you try this? It'll go well with the drums. We're like, okay. And like, he just adds a total different, he adds a different attitude mm-hmm. and a dynamic. Sorry, my, my English coach is behind me. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so, so he makes us all better. Like he's just, he brings us, you know, uh, we were, we were lost, you know, for a little while, like all three of us were, I'm pretty sure. It was so, it was, God damn it kicked our ass when we come like to jam and not having somebody and still searching for somebody until he like showed up like an angel on Halloween uh, at a, a friend's party. And they're like, dude, I forgot. Like you need to ask him to try it for drums. And I had uh, pigtails and like jean shorts on. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Halloween's great. Right. <laughs> Crazy thing is he didn't even play for four years, man. The first time that he picked up, he didn't even drums, have his fucking kit. Yeah, he didn't have a kit. He, he listened to the songs on the yeah. way, like to work and everything. And then he showed up, set up his kit finally. And he just, he freaking nailed it. First time in four years. Yeah. You, yeah, exactly. That look on your face, exact same thing. Shit. Whenever like I heard that, yeah. no idea. He blew us all away by playing Hellbent and Solus. It was just like, this is our guy. <laughs> this is our guy. It and, was very, and, not not to not to butt in, but it was very imperative for me because when I started with Seven Stones, I didn't know how to play bass. I didn't. I knew how to keep rhythm. I played on drums just a little bit throughout my life. And with our previous drummer, that's how I adapted my play style and how I started to learn as a bass guitarist was following along to what he was doing. And then fast forward, we're now looking for another drummer. And it was – it was it was a lot of like low key hidden stress from these guys that I was taking home out of this element every day, every night, you know, sometimes, you know, regrettably having night terrors from just being so stressed out and falling asleep to, you know, constantly just being in an ill mood all the time. And it was kind of a, a, yeah, I was. I'm not, I'm not going to even, even hate it. And then, you know, a couple a couple really fill ins that we had for some shows. They they were talented and they were very good at their craft, but I still feel like me and how I played as a basis and how my lines and everything that I put into the songs and how I grew during the songs still wasn't connecting with those guys that were filling in for us. And when we came across Jacob and like they said, when he came and started playing Hellbent, it was like, it was like he had been there the whole entire time. Mm-hmm. Honestly, for me, I'm gonna uh, I'm gonna pull like an Amy Lee of Evanescence. He brought us back to life. Like I, I <laughs> yeah. literally, like it was a a jolt from all of us. Like we just we jammed those two songs like over and over. They're like, dude, do you know this one? And he was like, I have yeah, that one a little bit. And we'd like we'd go into it, even if like he would make the slightest mistake, he would still roll with it. He didn't stop, and he just I was like. It's what we fucking need, man. Right after it's he joined need. Seven Stones, it was like what two, three weeks later. We had our first show with him. Oh, yeah. Like, yeah, dude. We I remember we played Hellbent. We we fucked one part of just like because we were so excited to finally be playing live. With and the, the new drummer. and we fucked up. And and what we even Jacob kept the song going? It was it yeah. beautiful because we fucked it up and we just looked at each other. And we just kept the song going. We still finished it out strong. Yeah. The entire show was just badass, man. It was a really good crowd. And <laughs> it, it was. was uh, oh, I'm, I'm sorry. I know it was memorable. It was memorable. So it's safe to say that he upped your guys' game and lit a fire in your ass, correct? Oh, one hundred and ten percent. He still does. Like, I, like the dedication from Jacob is in fucking insane. Like that that drive that he makes, you know, an hour and a half. Yeah, I mean, he's he's coming from Sylvania, Fort Payne, Alabama, to Chattanooga, Tennessee. He's making that drive twice twice a week so yeah. he's driving there and back on tuesdays and thursdays and sometimes saturdays too 
And still gets up at 5 a.m. And still to gets up at 5 a.m. to go be a master mechanic at Ford every day of the week. Buy him a beer. Get him a beer and buy him dinner. Yeah, somebody touch his penis. For <laughs> 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 I mention he's a full-time dad. Oh, and he's a father. Yeah. yeah, and he's a full-time dad. So, Jeez, kudos. All right, this interview's over. Never mind. <laughs> <laughs> He's like, I'm trying to find somebody to touch Jacob's penis now. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So, who did the artwork for the single break? Brandon Sutton. Yeah, right? Brandon Sutton. Brandon Sutton. Blue Room Media. Blue Room Media. Blue Room Media. Yeah. I always forget. I always like to give the artist a little kudos because I have to look out on, 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 on stuff like that, man. Yeah. He does really cool stuff. He's done. He did to the stage video. Yeah, yeah. He did their, the their new single they just dropped. He did their whole video. Also did the Blue Remedia also did the visualizer for a break as yeah, well. Alert visualizer. Oh. <laughs> I forget these things sometimes. So. <laughs> now, I know you guys mentioned you don't know if you're going to do an EP or full link, but if you decide to do whatever, uh, is this going to come out this year? You guys are going to wait to put it out maybe next year or see what happens? Probably next year. 2022. Yeah, yeah. 2022. Yeah. Yeah. We've got, uh, we got some stuff we got to look at on the song wise of, you know, what songs, because we were talking about internally, like, adapting a few old songs and re revisiting them and redoing them just as with Jacob with, with Jacob and oh. with Dalton and Ike. Mm -hmm. Is there, so yeah. if we were to do that, do you have any songs that you would want to hear uh, redone by any chance? Sorry. Asking for a friend. <laughs> <laughs> See, man, that's so, that's so tedious because I'm afraid if I say one song, I'll be like, what the hell is wrong with that song? You just, I don't know. I did. There is actually, there's no way in hell that you would get that response. Then again, I don't know if you know the discography that well either. So that might've been a dickhead question, actually. <laughs> Acting like you've, I've listened to him for years. Like, 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 yeah, I've seen those interviews. Oh, trust me. Um, I, I ain't sleeping breathe seven stones, okay? <laughs> um, man, I kind of supposed to be on the hot seat now. Oh, man. I... I like I like all of it. That's just me personally. I like every single bit of it. But I mean, that's totally up to you guys. You know what I mean? I don't <laughs> do the whole damn thing over. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, damn. If we do that. I will. I refuse to do the whole fucking thing over. <laughs> we were talking about it, and I was like, no, let's pick out three. You know, tops, and then maybe <clears throat> this will be the last time that we do those songs, though. Yeah, yeah, swear to God, I don't like I, touch my um, yeah, yeah. but I think it'd be cool to have that, you know, with our new stuff, and then like have I guess like three of our favorite songs off the original album, like throw it on. But there's also, but now with, but now with the guys that we're going with now, there's one song in particular. Uh, spoiler alert: We've already talked about the song a lot here. Uh, there's one song in particular, in, in, "Into the Dark." Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Uh, there's one like with what with what Ike and Dalton bring to the table, yeah. there's a lot of elements that they're, that is within their wheelhouse that will be able to give us the original true 110% vision that we have for that yeah. song that we weren't able to incorporate. Truly, truly that, change the production. Yeah. It could it. truly just yeah. change the whole game for it. And, and that, that's, that's a, uh, that, that right there is the reason why we're, we've made the decision to possibly revisit like at two or three songs off of the original album. Take your emotions and let's just make you cry the entire time. <laughs> yeah. That's fucking beautiful. Like those yeah. guys know what they're doing. Yeah. Okay. Hey, hey, I'm hey, hey, for that song. No, uh, song. <laughs> if, if your music hits somebody like that powerfully enough, then how hey, you're doing your job. Yeah. That's it. That's that's what we that's why we want to do it. At least I know being a songwriter, that's what I've always wanted. I want to just connect with people. Yeah. So people don't feel like they're alone, whether it be about drinking or if you want to talk about break about being pissed off about shit. <laughs> and I like how people can adapt to certain songs or just an album that make them not feel like an outcast, you know, that that they feel like this hey, this band is my friend, this band gets me. They they know exactly who I am. I and oh, yeah. I feel right in, I, I fell right into this band because of their lyrics and music. So that's the beauty of music, I think. Agreed. 110%. Powerful language. Yeah, it's so true. 
So what do you guys hope everyone takes away while listening to any of Seven Stones music in general? What do you guys hope they get from it? I guess, you know, uh, a sense of understanding of, you know, maybe, especially off the first album, that, that is about a lot of heartbreak. And But you're still, you can get through it, you know. There's still, there's another day. There's another day to be there. Maybe not drink as much as I did to fucking help with it, but um, yeah, that could go bad. But um, yeah, man, the, you're not alone. Uh, like we're always here. Like there's always aggression. There's always pain. But you can always grow from it. You know, always learn. You come out stronger, even as shitty as it actually is at the time. There's always more. And not to sound gimmicky, but I mean that's that's the name of the album. There's always there's always a hope for tomorrow. You know, if shit, shit just doesn't go your way today, you know what? Dust, dust yourself off, and, and there's always a tomorrow. Yeah. Got to hope and pray for the better days. Yeah. That is for sure. And you never know. You may see somebody in a, in a store that, that's looking at just for album covers, and they're going through a shitty time, and they look, and they say, hey, look, there's hope for tomorrow. Look at that cover. Yeah. Honey. And just grab it. Mm-hmm. I know you guys had a lot of music. You still have a lot of music that you go back and listen to, but do you still have a go-to album or a song that you find yourself gravitating back to that you have to listen to from like week to week or a couple months down the road that you you know you have to have that album or song? Within our own catalog or just no, no, no. I think he's talking about personal. Oh, okay, okay. Somebody else needs to go because <laughs> I guess I've got to think about it for a second because I listen to music on a regular basis. Yeah, uh, I, I'll, I'll go out there. Uh, I'll throw Metallica song out there. Um, the Outlaw Torn, the Outlaw Torn by Metallica. Yes, yes, hands down. It's my favorite. It's my favorite song by Metallica, uh, lyric wise. Like just you know, when there's vocals. Uh, my other favorite song that I would touch on also, it's also a Metallica song is to live is to die. And that's an instrumental song. So it's just, it's, it's the ballad and the message that's being conveyed in both songs. It's, it's just something that just helps my, not only my creativity, but it helps me start, see different perspectives on what's going on around you. I, I want to say this right fast but before we move on to, to the other two guys here. And I apologize. But You're I want to say this on Outlaw Torn. Uh, or uh, uh, for, my, for Metallica on Master of uh, But when right. I hear Outlaw Torn, I go back to li- and listen to Orion and uh, two together. You're yeah. kind of the same song in, in, you know, into one, if that makes sense. If you listen yeah. to it closely, with lyrically, going yeah. back and putting that on Orion, it's just like... Poof. It really is. I mean, it's, it's, it's all... It all revolves around... It all revolves around... Um, uh, them being um torn down by cliff's death i mean he even says he even says in the last in the second verse of the song he says you make me want to smash the clock and feel that i'd rather die behind the wheel that's it and yeah and it's just it's a it's a, it's a very powerful song you know it, it's, there's there's a there's a certain bar in it that just opens up my mind to creativity he says um uh he says, uh, "I'd rather die behind be, die behind the wheel." And then he says, uh, "Time was never on my side, so on I wait my whole lifetime." Yeah, and that 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 just speaks echoes to me. Volumes. Sorry, volumes. I won't do it. Yeah, <clears throat> yeah, as long as, yeah. That's our word, coach. That's our the, the translators back there. <laughs> uh, I would say uh, abandon a song that sticks out to me that I listen to a lot is Blackbird. By Alter Bridge. Hmm. That, is a, that is a very deep song. And just the music itself is just, uh, you know, you feel that when you listen to it and like you're going through a hard time, you just feel those lyrics and you feel that emotion in the music and the guitar solos are just mind blowing. That's on for me. I've, I've got two albums that I go back, back and forth on a lot. Uh, one's not surprising if, well, uh, <clears throat> Dirt, Alice in Chains. I love that album. That and the Unplugged album. I think the Unplugged album actually saved, saved me in college for sure. And then uh, Purgatory by Tyler Childers. Uh, I go I go back and forth on him and Sturgill a lot. And then Jason as well. So love Tyler Childers, man. Such an amazing songwriter. Ah, 
I've, I've tried to get into like some of the new country, like Chris Stapleton. He's like from Eastern Kentucky, where I'm from. So, ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Jacob fucking Klein. <laughs> <laughs> He, he, he shows up at the end of the interview. Wow. Yes, he does. Yeah. <laughs> but you get to see the man, the myth, the legend that we've been talking about. Folks, you want to get out and pick up Seven Stone's new single entitled Break and also get out and pick up their full length album entitled A Hope for Tomorrow. Give this band a fair shot. You won't be disappointed. Guys, how can folks stay in touch with you all? Buy some merchandise, these singles, the albums, tour dates, anything that's involved with Seven Stones. How can they do that? Go check us out on Facebook, on Instagram, yeah, and Twitter. Uh, we have all of our uh, information posted. Uh, Tori, right now, we're trying to work on that for the new year. Uh, so we're going to be keeping everyone updated on that. But merchandise, music, everything's posted in our links, all in our Facebook page. And before I let you guys go, would you care to do a promo for my show? Sure, go ahead. Sure, everybody. What's up, everybody? We're Seven Stones, and you're listening to Bod's Mayhem Hour. Everybody stick around. We got some great, great stuff coming up, and you only hear these interviews right here. Right here. Our hour. And also get out and check out our Facebook page. It has our podcast link and our YouTube link. And please, I'm at 645 subscribers. If I get to 800 subscribers, I'll eat a bologna sandwich, take my shirt off, and sing Baby Shark or Aqua Girl. I don't know. Barbie Girl. I'll sing anything like that. Just give me some more subs because we got some great stuff coming up. And check out Seven Stones. You will not be disappointed. Check out their new single, Break. Please pick up their full-length album entitled Hope for Tomorrow. And like I said, you won't be disappointed. So, guys, thank you so much. And you have the you have the most support on here for me also. Thanks, Thanks brother. That means the world. Thank you. Much love. Take care. to Bud's Mayhem Hour. Follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram.